Hello everyone and welcome to Champion Life Center Philippines. Thank you for joining us today in our online worship celebration. Before we begin, make sure na hindi ma-miss ng mga kapamilya at kaibigan mo ang ating online worship experience today. Kaya naman, tag them right now on the comment box below. Kung hindi mo pa ito nagagawa, please share this video right now on your page or start a watch party para naman ang mga kapamilya at kaibigan mo ay ma-bless katulad mo. For those who are tuning in with us right now, please let us know that you are here with us. Kaya naman, greet everyone, say hi to them on the comment box. Hello and welcome sa ating mga kapatid sa Champion Life Center Philippines. Kamusta po kayong lahat and we hope that you are all doing well. We also want to greet ang iba pa nating mga kasamahan from other CLC satellites. Hello and welcome champions! Tell us where you are watching today. And let us not forget our new friends. If you are joining us for the first time and you are new to CLC, hello and welcome to our family. We would love to connect with you and get to know you more. So after the celebration, please visit our Facebook page and leave us a message because we would love to chat with you. Later on, we'll have our lead pastor, Pastor Jerry Beringer from Champion Life Center Main Campus to continue with the second part of our Hope in the Dark series entitled, Hope Through It All. Today is going to be an exciting time, so get ready and be encouraged by today's message. Again, we are all happy that you are with us today. Right now, join us in worship with our praise and worship team and be prepared for the word. Good morning, champions. Again, we are so glad and excited to have you here in our praise and worship online session. And we would want to invite you to come and join us as we sing praises and songs before the Lord. So let's go ahead and worship Him this morning. i 
worship you. I'll worship you.
talk, God. See with me how great is our God. And oh, we'll see how great is our God. I worship you. everyone. So are you ready for the Word of God today? Well, type I'm ready, right? Just go ahead, type I'm ready. Today we are continuing on the two-part series, Hope in the Dark. Last week we heard about my living hope and we learned that through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have a living hope. We can rise up from our situation because we have been raised with Christ. And we enter into an inheritance that will never spoil or fade, that is reserved in heaven for us. That hope is shielded by the power of Jesus through faith in him. Amen. Praise God. Well, today I want to talk to you about hope through it all. See, many of us are experiencing hardships and tragedies that seems unbearable. But through all of our troubles, there is still hope. So I want you to turn with me to our passage today in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. It says this, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Well, in the scripture that we read this morning, well, Paul used the word hope three times. Paul used hope in connection with God Because God is the only source of hope. Ultimately, our hope is not in our friends, what they can do for us, what our employers can do, what the government can do. Well, they may be able to do a lot of good things for us, but ultimately, our hope is not in our circumstances or in other people. Our hope is in God. He also uses hope in connection with suffering which is the reason why we need hope. To put it in simple terms that we can all understand, when life hurts and dreams fade, nothing helps like hope. Hope gives us the courage and strength to face life with an unshakable faith in an all-powerful, ever-present, and ever-loving God who knew me even before I was born. Friends, he knows everything about our lives from beginning to the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Our lives begin and end in God. While the pain and heartache may take us by surprise, it will not take God by surprise nor catch him off guard. Well, hope is defined as a desire accompanied by expectation of or belief in fulfillment. But biblical hope is the assurance of something that we have not yet fully experienced. And this is different from the uncertain and wishful thinking of the world. The promise is that we will not be frustrated or disappointed by this hope because it is guaranteed here and now by the love of God that the Holy Spirit pours into our hearts as believers. Friends, hope is not just a nice option that gives us temporary relief. Hope is not wishful thinking. Hope is vital to our survival. Well, a number of years ago, 
researchers performed an experiment to see the effect of hope uh, on those undergoing hardship. Well, two sets of laboratory rats were placed in separate tubs of water. And the researchers left one set in the water and found that within an hour, they had all drowned. The other rats were periodically lifted out of the water and, and then returned. And when that happened, the second set of rats swam for over 24 hours. They lasted longer. Why? Well, not because they were given a rest, but because they suddenly had hope. Those animals somehow hoped that if they could just stay afloat just a little longer, well, someone would reach down and rescue them. And that's what kept them going. See, if hope holds such power for mindless rats, how much greater should this be effect in our lives? Friends, if we could just persevere, there is someone who will rescue us, and that is God. We have hope because we have God and his promises. Although we have not fully experienced it, we know that there is a place where life will be free from the heartaches, suffering, and pain of this present world. A place where the throne of God is and the children of God can worship and praise him without interruptions and limitations. Regardless of who we are and where we are in life, we all need hope. And God has given us the hope we need to see us through this fallen and troubled world. So let's look at some truths about hope that are revealed uh, in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5 that, we're, that we just read that will give us hope through all that we go through. The first is this. Hope ensures us of the future. When we hurt, we sometimes feel that our future is uncertain, and therefore we feel hopeless. Paul is giving the assurances to the Roman Christians that in spite of the difficulty and suffering that they are experiencing, their future is bright and glorious. You now we find there in verse uh, 1 and 2, Romans 5, 1 and 2, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now, notice carefully Paul's words at the end of verse 2. He says, we can rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Well, what does that mean? Well, the word rejoice here actually means to boast something that you're proud of, you shout it out, which is to express an unusually high degree of confidence in someone or something. In other words, we have confidence that we will experience the glory of God. God has promised us a great future. You have a great future. He does what he says he will do. And we can rejoice in hope because no matter how bad things are right now, God has promised that our future is better. And even when things are good, it can't compare to what God has in store for us. See, the promised future hope of the glory of God assures us that what God started in our lives and he redeemed us, he will complete in glory. We can be confident of our future glory because of what God has given us. We have hope of a bright and glorious future with God because we are justified. You know, Paul says, therefore being justified by faith. What that means is Jesus paid for the penalty of our sin. And the consequence of our sin separated us from God and we are condemned and doomed eternally. But Jesus took our place and bore the judgment of our sin. Because we have put our faith in the Lord Jesus and his work, God cleansed us from our sin and credits us to the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we have been declared innocent, <laughs> you know, and, and we're not guilty anymore. There's no more condemnation. Friends, we now stand in a right relationship with God. That's what we call as justification. 
So through our faith in him, we were given and reconciled. We were forgiven and reconciled to God as if we never sinned. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, why don't you type praise God or I'm justified? I mean, just declare it in your life. I'm justified. I praise God for that. Well, we need to remember that we have hope of the glory of God because we were justified through our faith in Jesus. Because also we have peace with God. Paul also said we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, since we have been reconciled to God through Jesus, we have peace with God. And to have peace with God means that the war is over. You know, there's peace. It means that the struggle has ended. We are no longer in conflict with God. Because sin causes a conflict between people and God. Sin separates us from our holy God. But when we repent of our sin and turn to God, we have peace with God. Now, that's the first step to have the peace of God. Because there, these are two different things. The peace with God means you have no conflict with Him and He is on your side. On the other hand, the peace of God is His nature that He imparts to you. In other words, He gives you peace. But until we fully surrender our lives to God, we cannot experience the peace of God. People try to find peace in so many things in their life and they still feel hopeless. So if you keep running away from God or you keep being angry at God, you will never experience the peace of God. See, the peace of God is what Paul refers in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Let's read it. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Well, this is an amazing peace. This is the kind of peace that enables you to withstand the storm. This is the kind of peace that is not based on circumstances. It transcends circumstances. In fact, it transcends our ability to comprehend it. We are even amazed that we are experiencing this peace when the circumstances are such that we should be experiencing great anxiety. We should be worried. We should be concerned. But we still have peace. That's the kind of peace that God gives us. And this is our hope, that we have peace with God. And therefore, we have the peace of God through all that we go through in life. And the other thing that Paul said in, in verse 2, because we have access to God. In Romans chapter 5, verse 2, it says this, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. See, because we have been justified and have peace with God, we can confidently approach Him we now have access. Praise God. You, you can type, I have access. You know, I have access. That's very important that you have access to God, the holy God, the almighty God, the powerful God, the, the God who, who uh, created the heavens and the earth. You have access to that God. All right? So Paul says we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand. We have access to enter into the grace of God that we are now standing on. That's His grace. No matter what it looks like, you have hope because you have access into the grace of God. It's the grace to be redeemed, the grace to overcome, the grace to be healed, the grace to prosper, the grace to be sufficient, the grace to live an abundant life. It's only through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we are given this grace. Friends, this speaks of our position before God. Before we surrendered our lives to Christ, we stood guilty and condemned before God. But through our faith in Jesus, we now stand forgiven, justified, and at peace with God. We are continually standing 
in God's grace. And we can now approach God anytime we need to without fear of condemnation because he's now our heavenly father. We have access to his grace. You have hope right now that there is a better future ahead. The second thing is that hope enables us to rejoice through our troubles. When we are hurting, we can't seem to make sense of our suffering. What good is all this suffering? Is there a reason for my pain? Are there any benefits coming from this painful experience? You know, you may be asking a lot of those questions that there are things that are happening around us that we don't understand. But Paul's answer is yes, there is a reason for your suffering and pain. There are benefits that come from your painful experience, no matter what we go through. You know, in the other translation of Romans 5.3, I'll read it from the New Living Translation. It says this, We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they are good for us. They help us learn to endure. Friends, just as we rejoice in our hope of the future, we can rejoice when trials come our way. You know, verse 3 begins with the phrase, not only so, or it means not only do we rejoice in hope of the glory of God, but also we rejoice in our sufferings. In other words, as believers, we do not only rejoice because of the future glory uh, that awaits us. We rejoice in the trials that come our way today. Note the word suffering. It literally means pressure. You know, it was used to describe the process of pressuring or uh, pressing the oil from olives or squeezing the juice from the grapes. Now, every day, you and I face suffering. You and I have pressure. We undergo stress or pressure at different degrees. Some have more pressure than others. But regardless of our situation, we all go through pressure. And therefore, we go through suffering. In fact, right now, are you feeling the pressure of what's going on around you? Are you suffering? Maybe you are at home, isolated, quarantined. Are you feeling the pressure of things going on around you? I like what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. Let me encourage you with this. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Friends, we get squeezed and can feel the pressure, but we are not crushed or broken. Hallelujah. We can go through all this tremendous pressure in our lives, but we are not to be anxious or worry about it. We are to rejoice in it. Now, I don't want to make light of your suffering or your pain, but suffering is part of life. Sometimes we only focus on all the blessings, but the reality is there's going to be suffering in this world, and we will go through suffering you know, it's part of it. But the problem with suffering is that there are times when we don't understand why we are suffering. While we are suffering, there, there seems to be no point or any reason for it. It doesn't make any sense. And it especially does not make any sense if it seems to serve no purpose. But if we know that our suffering serves a godly purpose, then we can rejoice because we know the outcome of it. In other words, God allows things to happen for a reason. Think about Jesus. He also suffered. Jesus had the joy and he endured the cross because he knew the purpose of his suffering. See, friends, we can respond to the pressure of sufferings in one of two ways. We can allow it to drive us away from God or we can allow it to draw us closer 
to God. I believe that once we understand the reason behind our troubles and tribulation, that we will be drawn closer to God. Paul gives us benefits of the troubles or sufferings that we experience. He, he said in Romans 5, uh, verse 3, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. You know that the original word of perseverance means endurance. The more difficult circumstances we face, the more we learn to endure. In a physical sense, the more we push our bodies through work and exercise, the stronger our bodies become. Well, the same is true in the spiritual realm. All of us, um, you know, when we go through uh, difficulties and challenges, all of us face these things, and the stronger our faith in Christ becomes. When we go through the challenges, when we go through these difficulties and trials that we face, our faith in Christ becomes stronger. All of us need endurance in our lives. Endurance is the ability to withstand the storms of life. It's endurance is the ability to hold up under the pressure of our daily problems without being crushed. Endurance is the ability to shine as light even in the dark. Well, God gives us the inner strength and the ability that we need to endure. Amen. Praise God. He gives that, that ability. Type amen or I will endure. All right? You can endure. So type it right now. Just agree with me. Believe with me. Well, Paul also said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, he said, And your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. See, your hope in Jesus inspires you to endure. When you know that you have the Lord on your side, when you know what he went through, the difficulties, he's suffering, and he has given you promises that he will take you through, when you know that, it, it inspires you to endure. The Bible says that suffering also produces character. If you find in Romans 5, verse 3 to 4, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. Friends, if there is one thing God wants to do, it is to build strong character within us. Character is who we are regardless of the circumstance we find ourselves under. If we say that we have a godly character, then we will do the right thing regardless of the circumstances and pressure we are under. See, our character will be tested and proven by the difficulties that we experience in life. When we continue to do what is right in spite of the circumstances, it proves that our character has been transformed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, character comes from a word that means to be approved or tested. You know that gold, silver, and other precious metals are tried by fire to test them, to prove them as genuine or pure. Well, the trials in our lives are like the fire, the test, they're like the precious metals. They prove us genuine. Character is something that is developed from our experience of going through the fire. We can call this proven character. Have you made that statement before? It's a proven character. Our character strengthens our faith in our hope. We know that God is at work. We know that God is doing something even when we do not understand what that is. Hope is a conscious decision to trust in the sovereignty of God. And we need hope. You need hope. I need hope. It makes us optimistic that God is doing something eternal and worthwhile in our lives. And these troubles that we are experiencing at the moment are nothing compared to the eternal work that God is doing within each of us that will last throughout eternity. When we know that God has a bigger purpose for our troubles, trials and sufferings strengthens our faith in Him and assures us of our future with Him in glory. Well, finally, 
hope preserves us from being disappointed. Friends, disappointment is something that we all are familiar with. All of us had, had moments when we faced disappointment in our lives. We may have been disappointed with a family member. Maybe you've been disappointed by a friend. You've been disappointed by uh, your employer or government or whoever, or even someone we work with. Our hope in God helps us to overcome that moment of disappointment because we are reminded that God is in control and what he does and what he allows to happen in our lives is for our eternal good. When we go through trials and suffering, sometimes we get consumed by the things that are temporary and we forget the eternal. Hope helps us to see beyond the temporary and we focus on the things that have eternal value. That's why in Romans 5, 5 that we read, and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given us. Friends, Paul is saying that in the end, you and I will not be disappointed because everything we don't understand here and now will be revealed to us when we see the Lord in his glory. And God keeps his covenant that he will bring us into our future glory with him. We know this because of his love for us. That's why in Romans chapter 5, verse 6, it says, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. And goes on to verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Well, verse 8 says, while we were still sinners, God demonstrated his love toward us. See, God loved us before we ever did anything righteous. We didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. But God gave us his love. If God loves us enough, to redeem us, then he loves us enough to take us through all our troubles and bring us into his glory. Jesus made a great sacrifice and demonstrate his love for us and to ensure us of our future. You know, in this book, Hope Again by Chuck Swindoll, he wrote that hope is a wonderful gift from God a source of strength and courage in the face of life's harshest trials. When we are trapped in a tunnel of misery, hope points to the light at the end. When we are overworked and exhausted, hope gives us fresh energy. When we are discouraged, hope lifts our spirits. When we are tempted to quit, hope keeps us going. When we lose our way and confusion blurs the destination, hope dulls the edge of panic. When we struggle with crippling disease or a lingering illness, hope helps us persevere beyond the pain. When we fear the worst, hope brings reminders that God is in control. When we must endure the consequences of bad decisions, hope fuels our recovery. When we find ourselves unemployed, hope tells us we still have a future. When we are forced to sit back and, and wait, hope gives us the patience to trust. When we feel rejected and abandoned, hope reminds us that we are not alone and we will make it. When we say our farewell to someone we love, hope in the life beyond gets us through the grief. End of quote. Friends, hope through it all is to be found by resting in God who loves us so much that He ensures us of our future glory with Him. He enables us to rejoice when we are troubled and will not allow us to be disappointed. 
If you have not experienced the hope that can only come through Jesus, today you can have that hope. If you feel hopeless and helpless, I encourage you to come to the Lord Jesus today. He gives hope to the hopeless. Surrender your life to Jesus and pray this simple prayer with me and mean it from your heart. Lord Jesus, forgive me if I have taken things into my own hands. I repent of my sins. I surrender my life to you. Be my Lord and Savior. And I will put my hope and trust in you. Amen. Friend, if you have prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. You are no longer hopeless. You are hopeful. We have a prayer line available for you at the end of this broadcast. Please listen to the instructions of our host. Well, our time is up. Let me pray a blessing on your life. You can gather your family and let me just give you a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine His face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance on you and give you His peace. May it cause to you to walk under an open heaven. May it cause you to prosper in every area of your life, even as your soul prospers. May He open doors of opportunities for you that you can enter in and be victorious for God. May He continue to fill you with His love, grace, and the power of His Spirit throughout this week and until He comes. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, praise God and God bless you. Here in our church, one way we honor and obey God is through our tithes and offering. Kaya naman, through our giving, we are able to support the ministry of our local church to bring the gospel to the community and help out in our local missions. We thank you for your faithfulness and obedience to God, and surely our God who is faithful will honor and bless you indeed. As we give, allow me to say a prayer for our giving today. Father God, we recognize that you are our great provider. Right now, we choose to honor you and trust you in our giving so that it will be used in your kingdom and it will help those who are in need. Lord, I pray for your people that you will continue to bless them and prosper them. May they experience the favor, provision, and protection that comes from you in their lives. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Muli mga kapatid, salamat po sa patuloy niyong pagsuporta sa gawain ng ating Panginoon. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope that you are encouraged with that message by Pastor Jerry Berenger. And again, if you are new to CLC and you're joining us for the first time, please don't forget to visit our Facebook page and leave us a message because we would love to chat with you after this. Be sure to follow us on our social media pages that's on your screen right now para updated ka sa mga latest announcements and updates from our church family. Again, thank you for being with us and join us again next time. Stay safe, God bless, and we look forward to seeing you again. Goodbye, champions!